Hi, I'm Brian, and I'll be explaining the MyDuino test portion of task one of the Mechatronics lab tasks. Um, if you take a look at the code, um, up here is initializing variables, setting up the encoder, and things like that. But in the main loop where a lot is happening, first you have a read button function. Um, if you click the button, you can see that for B3, it changes the value, so that's working. Um, right here, we have a piece of code where it's basically saying that the button triggers the start of the rest of the, uh, the void loop. We already had the code running because we pressed the button, but that is basically what that, this part is saying. Um, once run code equals one, you're gonna see robot LED two light up and robot LED one be blank. Uh, that's this is two, this is one, so it makes sense. The red light is on and the green light is off. Then here is reading the four buttons. So there's four digital inputs, and it's gonna read all of the buttons. So we already saw this one get read before. That's button three. Right here is the roller button. That is B1, and as you can see, if I let go, it becomes one, and if I press it in, it becomes zero. And then here's the long arm button. That's B2, zero if I press it in, one if it's not pressed. So that's in working order. After uh, pulling the buttons, we are reading sensors. So the infrared sensor is right here. Uh, it goes by IR in the serial monitor. And you can see that when I, my hand is not near it, it's going to be a high value, about 100. And when my hand is in front of it, it's going to decrease it or increase it, depending on how, the, how it's wired in. Uh, the potentiometer works as so you rotate this, and it changes the value of POT here from 0 up to a very high number, 674 is where it's sitting at right now. Um, you'll, you might also be able to hear that changing the input of the potentiometer can turn on and off these motors, which are, well, I'll mention a little bit later, but the encoder is right here. This you also rotate, and under CNT here, it's basically counting how much it's been rotated. So as I rotate it, clockwise it increases and as I rotate it counterclockwise it decreases. Um, the encoder is basically in working order because we can see that change. The motor speed is initialized here under read sensors and then move motor is another function that we got from uh, importing the MyDuino library and move motor is working on motor one and motor two to give them their uh, related speeds. So here is one of the motors. It's rotating at M2, and here's M1. This is constantly rotating at M1 SPD, which is the variable name for the speed there. Um, here's the piece of the code that actually outputs all of the values in the serial monitor and down here would be a useful piece of code if we had anything plugged into the digital output ports right here, but for the MyDuino test, we're not using the valves or anything like that, so the only real output that's super noticeable is in the serial monitor or with the motors. So robot.digital isn't really doing anything here, um, but it's still there, and then as we showed up here, there was a defined amount of time, an in initial time and a stop time. This stop time is really far away, but if you were to leave this running forever, you would get to stop the stop time and then it would kill everything. Um, the motors would turn off, all the digital output, uh, the, all the things connected to the digital outputs would turn off, the LED would turn off, and run code would go to zero, which would cause it to not repeat anymore. So that is the MyDuino test. Everything is clearly in working order here. And yeah. Hey everyone, it's 
me, Gavin Baker, and I'll be explaining the actuator test to make sure all of our components are working. Uh, as you can see from the code, everything starts in the off position. All the digital outputs in pins one, two, three, and four, and all the motors are on the off position. And then after a delay of a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, then everything will turn on, all the pins, all the motors will be turned on to full speed. And then after another second, it will turn back off. So it'll alternate on and off. And here are the motors. Oh, and it switches the motor speed on each loop to test both directions to make sure they flip clockwise and counterclockwise. Down here, we have our two motors plugged into our Arduino. These are plugged into the motor ports. And then we have our actuator, which is here, our valve and our tank, which are all plugged into the digital output one. And we have our pump to pump up the air and we've pumped it up to, we'll pump it up to around 80. And now we're going to upload the code. And as you can see, the air is releasing and pushing the actuator in and out. And then we have our motors. They are spinning. There we go. And they're alternating clockwise and counterclockwise. And that's it for the actuator test. All right, hi, I'm Brian. I am back to explain task two from the mechatronics task list. Um, here is the code. Um, we're going to include the MyDuino library and the MyDuino robot. Um, initialize a variable for the button. And what this code in the loop does is it reads our button. We're using a long arm uh, button sensor thing. and then to avoid, or for debouncing code, we add a delay of 50 milliseconds so that when we press it or let it go, it doesn't basically vibrate and press the button and unpress and then press again or something like that, um, just to avoid any issues in our code. Then we are doing a, this is, this line, line 16 is resetting the solenoid to the off position, and then if the button is pushed, we are activating the magnet in the solenoid, um, which is plugged into digital output one, as you can see here. So you can see here's the solenoid I'm talking about, plugged into digital output one, and here is that button I showed you, plugged into digital input one. Um, as you can see, there's no magnet here. I can just like slide it in and out, but when I press the button, it becomes magnetic. I let go, it comes out, so, oh. and then I bring it out, oh. put them right next to each other, press, and it pulls it in. So, as you can see, um, pressing the button causes the magnet and the solenoid to activate, so it's a successful uh, task to. Alright, hello, it's Brian again with task three of the Group A's Mechatronics task list where we are tasked with um, creating a program that uh, reads in two buttons and an encoder and has a motor. So what it does is it uh, counts on the encoder basically um, how many full rotations it's gone around. So um, basically you can see 10 is the number for a full rotation. So in this conditional, we are counting only up until it's less than 11 because it's initialized at one just to make things easier for us. And then we are increasing the motor speed by 10% of its total speed, which is 255. Every time the uh, encoder counter increases by 10 or decreases by 10, or cha basically changes by a factor of 10 in either direction. You could go to negative 255 if you want, or negative 100, sorry about that. Um, 
So then we're reading the buttons. We've got two long arm uh, momentary switches here. And we're gonna read them in, and if one of them is pressed in, we're gonna light up the green light, and if the other one is pressed in, we're gonna light up the red light. And if one of them is pressed in, we're gonna go in one of the directions at the current speed according to M1 speed, which is determined up here. Then if the other, we're gonna go in the different direction at that same speed. And then um, if they're both pressed, we're gonna turn off both lights just like as if neither were pressed and we are going to turn off the motor. Um, we use a different variable so that we don't reset our M1 speed variable, we use an alternative variable to reset it to zero. And that way, basically, the, uh, the motor acts the same if both are pressed as it does if neither are pressed, but then it acts in opposite directions if one is pressed or the other is pressed. So I'm going to demonstrate. Sorry, I pressed it a little bit there. I'm going to run it, just reset it to zero, the speed to zero, that is. So you can see encoder is at negative one. It's a little finicky, but. And then M1 is at zero. So I'm going to take the motor, press in the button, and then if I turn the encoder up to 10 and then 20, it's going to be at a speed of 51. Um, it was at a speed of 25.5 at 10, and then if I get it up to 30, it's going to increase more, and then I'm going to increase it up to like about half of its speed, and then if I let go of this button, you can see it's on, if I hold it in, if I let go, it turns off, and then if I take the other button and press that in, it's going to go in the other direction, it's going to go counterclockwise this time. It's going to go clockwise if I press in this one. So, and then if I press both in, it's off. Um, it acts the same as if they were both unpressed. And then I will just take it up to full speed, just guess. Holding in a button so that it turns, and then we're going to keep increasing the speed with the encoder. So you can see once it hits 100, we can go up by 10 all we want doesn't matter it's gonna say at 255 because of our conditional that count would be less than 11 so we only ever get up to 255 which is the max speed of the motor and yeah so thing works the program works and the motor spins dependent on these switches I just pressed it in but uh, that is all for task 3 of the mechatronics task list. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm back to explain task four of the Mechatronics task list. Uh, in this task, you are supposed to activate a motor at any speed in any direction when an object comes within six to ten centimeters of the IR sensor. Um, and the banana plugs right here are also supposed to act as a kill switch, so if these touch together, the motor will turn off, otherwise it will run for 10 seconds. So here in the code, I initialize some variables. Notice that uh, it's integers and unsigned longs because the IR val should only be positive and any time value should only be positive, so that's the logic there. So we use a series of conditionals and a loop within the void loop to accomplish this. We read the IR value and we're, we're printing it just for our own ease of use, but that's not really important. We evaluate the time that has elapsed since the beginning of the program. And then if the value from the infrared sensor, or yeah, is uh, between 6 and 10 centimeters. We calibrated it to find these values. If it's between 6 and 10 centimeters, we'll jump into this while loop where we'll move the motor at any given speed. We evaluate the time since the motor has started, which is done by total time elapsed minus the time one, which was the time when the motor started. So that's how we kind of got around the whole uh, time issue. We evaluate if the, if the banana plugs are pressed together with this line, 
and then we use a series of conditionals to stop the motor and jump out of the while loop if 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds has passed or if the banana plugs are touched together. Um, and then I will be demonstrating this. So if I move my hand to within six to 10 centimeters, the motor is gonna run for 10 seconds. It's rotating clockwise, doesn't matter, and it's at full speed, also doesn't matter. I'm gonna do it again, six to 10 centimeters, right there. And then if I touch the banana plugs together, it stops. So that is basically how we accomplish task four. You see the code and see the demonstration here. Worked out nicely, thank you. All right, I'm Brian. I am back with task five of the Group A Mechatronics task list. We are uh, reading the ultrasonic sensor, no calibration. We're just placing an object 10, centimeter, 10 centimeters away from our ultrasonic sensor. I've got a ruler here next to the ultrasonic sensor. The speakers are at zero centimeters. And I'll just place an object at 10 centimeters away, maybe there. And we're getting a reading of 10 centimeters consistently. Um, so what you can kind of see is that obviously there's some, I could move it to like 11 and it's going to read 11, but if I'm in the middle, it's going to, you know, kind of vary between the two. It might be like 10, 11, 10, 11. So there's not much of a fine number here with the uh, ultrasonic sensor. It's a, it's a very accurate, like rounded to the centimeter type value, but as opposed to the IR sensor, which is like this number in the hundreds that's if you calibrate it, you can sort of make an inference as to what the distance is. And since it's such a larger number, you can get finer than just like one centimeter. You can go down to the milli like half centimeter or millimeters with the IR sensor, but it's uh, less of a straightforward value that you're returning to your robot when you use the IR sensor than when you use the other sensor. It's a lot more straightforward, so it's kind of all for the Mechatronics task list.